Hello and welcome to the FA Women's National League show, the show where we look at everything to do with the teams in the third and fourth tier of women's football in England. My name is Chris Gadsby. I'm here every Tuesday at 6pm bringing you the very latest from the FA Women's National League and this week is a very special week because it's FA Cup week for the teams in Tier 4. We'll be talking more about that later on and find out why I spent an hour going through all 120 fixtures from the second qualifying round last night looking for one particular team. But before we get into that, we will have a look at the results from the last week of Women's National League action. A quieter week as there was a lot of County Cup action, so you'll notice that there are not as many results to go through as usual. But as ever, we will start with the Northern results from the Northern Premier Division. Only two. Hull City 0, West Bromwich Albion 0 and Middlesbrough 1, Stoke City 2. So we'll look at that Middlesbrough game. Uh, plenty of bookings to talk about uh, in this game on the Stoke City side at least. Uh, goal for Middlesbrough coming from Eliza Boddy. Uh, goals for Stoke City coming in the 34th minute to Rebecca Knight, who was then booked one minute later, and to Rosine Kivell in the 51st minute. Red card for Stoke City as well. Late on in that game, Kelsey Richardson getting a straight red card. Also bookings for uh, Rosine Cavell in the 87th minute and Maya Lewis-Powell in the 90th minute. So plenty of cards being dished out in that game towards the end of it. We have a look at the Northern table after those two games. Uh, not a great deal of movement. Uh, West Bromwich Albion uh, there with Hull City both just gaining an extra point. So West Brom stay where they were. Hull City stay remain at the bottom of the table. They did have one point. They've now got two. Uh, but Stoke City have moved up uh, a couple of places above Middlesbrough and Sheffield with that win over Middlesbrough on Sunday. Southern Premier Division table then, just the one game. Chichester and Chelsea 1, Cardiff City 2. Late drama in this game as well. Uh, Cardiff had taken a very early lead, sixth minute for Caitlin Morgan to put Cardiff 1 and up. They held that until just 10 minutes to go in the game. Gemma Simmons equalising for Chichester and Chelsea. But then for Cardiff, Ellie Sargent popping up with just three minutes of normal time to go in the 87th minute, uh, getting the what proved to be the game-winning goal in that one. She was then subbed off one minute later for Isabel Newens, who came on in the 88th minute and then received a red card towards the end of that game as well. What that means in the Southern Premier Division table then is not a great deal. Uh, just Cardiff City and London Bees swapping places there just in the uh, bottom half of the table. Cardiff City moving from 10 points to 13 points, but the goal difference means they climb above the London Bees. Moving through then, and this is the same situation throughout the whole of the, the third and fourth tier. Uh, the Division 1 Midlands, only a couple of games. Sporting Cows are 2, Biddeth United 1, and Wemtown 0, Doncaster Rovers, Bells 2. Uh, goals for Sporting Cows are, uh, in that 2-1 victory. Both come in to Gurgit Dulay in the 67th and the 70th minute. Uh, two goals for there. No goals uh, information about Biddeth United as of yet, though. And then Wemtown, nil, Doncaster Rovers, Bells, two. Uh, goals for Doncaster Rovers coming from Nadia Khan and to Charlotte Dinsdale. Uh, Charlotte Dinsdale's goal coming in the 70th minute there for Doncaster Rovers. What that means in the table uh, is that Doncaster Rovers are have climbed up to uh, second position after that 2-0 victory over Wem Town. Uh, Sporting Cowser's 2-1 victory over Biddeth United has also seen them climb a couple of places above Peterborough United and Wem Town in the table. They are now fifth from bottom. Uh, Doncaster Rose Bells closing the gap on Lincoln City now to just two points. In the north, just the one game. 
Uh, and that was Norton Stockton Ancients 2, Newcastle United 4. Uh, a very entertaining game there. Uh, goals for Norton and Stockton Ancients to Bianca Owens in the second minute and Sophie Tierney in the ninth minute. Two quick goals for Norton and Stockton. Uh, goals for Newcastle United don't have times on them. But it was one for Katie Barker, Georgia Gibson, Bethany Guy and Rachel Lee. A victory for Newcastle United then means no change to the table, just in points, where they're now up to 16 points, just one win away from the top of the table. And they do have two games in hand over Leeds United. Liverpool Feds, though, only one point behind Leeds United, also with those two games in hand. Norton Stocks and Ancients remain in the middle of the table, but could drop a couple of places when Durham Sestra and Bradford City play their games in hand. Moving through then into the Division 1 South East, three games in this one, one of the more busy, uh, one of the busier Fixtures, uh, well, sorry, fixture list from last week. And Billericay Town 3, Cambridge United 0. Uh, goals for Billericay Town, two goals for Carissa Rodney and one for Zoe Russian. Uh, no goals between London Seaward and Enfield Town. Uh, and then the game of the day in the Division 1 South East, Norwich City 3, Harlow Town 4. Uh, goals for Norwich City coming to Natasha Snelling, uh, Catherine Stanley and Megan Todd. Unfortunately, no information as of yet about the Harlow Town scorers. What that means for the Division 1 South East table, though, uh, is that Hashtag United remain at the top. Billericay Town, though, are now level on points with them and the two of those sides are now eight points clear of uh, everybody else. Uh, Wimbledon could bring that down to six points with their game in hand uh, but eight points clear at the moment hashtag united and billericay town uh, actonians are in third wimbledon in fourth a further point back cambridge united in fifth on 15 points then a gap to london seaward who have a game in hand so they could get up to 15 but they're on 12 at the moment cambridge city on 10 three teams on seven queens park rangers enfield town and Norwich City. Norwich City could really have done with that victory, but it's done wonders for Harlow Town, who have got from one point to four points and are edging themselves ever closer back towards the midfield table. Uh, Stevenage, third from bottom, just above Harlow Town. Kent Football United still at the bottom of the table, yet to score a point this season, but they have played considerably fewer fixtures than everybody else. Now, I said it was a very uh, short uh, weekend of fixtures. That's all of them. There was nothing in the Division 1 Southwest last weekend because all the teams were involved in um, County Cup action. So uh, we're going to move through to look at the fixtures coming up this weekend before we get to the FA Cup because uh, this weekend it's third qualifying round where the Tier 4 teams, so the Division 1 teams, uh, are entering the competition. But the Northern and Southern Premier Division don't enter until the first round proper. So we do have Northern and Southern fixtures this weekend. We'll start then in the Northern Premier Division. Brighouse Town against Loughborough Lightning. Derby County against West Bromwich Albion. Uh, AFC Fylde against Sheffield. Hull City against Stoke City. And Nottingham Forest against Middlesbrough. So looking at some of these matchups, uh, you've got, again, nothing really that jumps out at me as being particularly kind of close size. So you've got Brighouse in 7th against Loughborough Lightning, who are in 12th. Derby County in 2nd against West Bromwich Albion, who are currently 8th. Filed against Sheffield is 4th against 11th. Hall City, the bottom place side, uh, are against Stoke, who are in ninth. So that's a game Hall might well be targeting. And then Nottingham Forest in 5th against Middlesbrough in 10th. So no kind of real top of the table clashes in that one. No kind of bottom of the table six pointers either. Uh, Hall City against Stoke City, probably the closest uh, game between two sides this weekend. 
in the Southern Premier Division, it's Ipswich Town against Bridgewater United, Keensham Town against Crawley Wasps, MK Dons against Gillingham, Oxford United against the London Bees, and Portsmouth against Hounslow. Again, Ipswich Town, we've got opportunity to go six points clear at the top of the table, although they will uh, be having, they will have played two games more than Southampton, so Southampton could bring that back. Both of those sides, don't forget, have that 100% record at the start of this season still intact. Uh, uh, Bridgewater United in third, though, um, so they could really upset Ipswich. Uh, They're only four points back as well, so they could get to within one point. Uh, Keensham Town against Crawley Wasps, that's 10th against 4th. Milton Keynes Dons against Gillingham is 13th against 6th. Uh, Oxford United against London Bees is 7th against 9th. And Portsmouth against Hounslow, 5th against 14th. Hounslow, of course, still looking for that first win of the season. So as I mentioned earlier in this show, it is FA Cup weekend for our Tier 4 teams. Those are the teams in Division 1 Midlands, Division 1 North, Division 1 South East and Division 1 South West. Uh, This is the third qualifying round with 85 fixtures, 170 teams left in the competition at this stage. Except that there isn't. There are only 169 teams left in the competition at this stage. Uh, So there should be 85 fixtures this weekend, but there are only 84. Um, So this is why yesterday I was going through all of the results from the second qualifying round, all 120 fixtures from the second qualifying round and searching for each team that won in that round uh, against the list for this weekend's third qualifying round to see which team it was that didn't exist, that won in the second qualifying round and didn't exist in the third qualifying round. And after uh, quite a bit of searching, I managed to find them. Uh, So... The one team not in the third qualifying round that won in the second qualifying round was Sir Tom Finney Ladies, who beat Marine Women by six goals to one. Uh, So I found that side, did a bit of searching um, and discovered that the third qualifying round draw pitted Sir Tom Finney Ladies against Bolton Ladies. Uh, Now, as you've been watching the show from the start, we'll remember that Bolton Ladies uh, unfortunately folded over the summer and uh, are not now able to uh, partake in any of the competitions. So, because they had been entered into the FA Cup at that stage, it left the FA Cup organisers with a... um, an odd number of teams, which of course is not uh, what they needed at this stage. So, uh, Sir Tom Finney ladies have been given a uh, a walkover straight into the first round proper. So that is why uh, there is only 84 fixtures, not 85, for this third qualifying round. So the third qualifying round includes the uh, 120 sides who won in the second qualifying round plus the 49 uh, Tier 4 sides uh, that uh, are in the Division 1s that we usually cover. So, um, what I'll do is I'm now going to go through all of the fixtures which involve the Tier 4 sides. not going to go through all 85 of them, but just the ones uh, which involve the Tier 4 sides. We have a couple of all Tier 4 clashes, uh, but a lot of them are against uh, sides from lower down the women's football pyramid. So, without further ado, we'll start with AFC Wimbledon against Walton Casuals, Abingdon Town against Porter's Ed, Anik Town face off against Penrith, uh, Altrincham take on Norton and Stockton Ancients, Barnsley against Salford City Lionesses, Burton Albion versus Mansfield Town, and Cheltenham Town versus Larkle Athletic, and Chesham United against Maidenhead United. Chester Street Town against Chorley, Chesterfield against Biddiff United, Crusaders take on Solihull Moors, Denham United versus Kent Football United, Doncaster Rovers Bells against Nottingham Trent University, Dronfield Town versus Peterborough United, Exeter City against Buckland Athletic, and FC United of Manchester against BRN ESC. 
Hackney face Stevenage, Harlow Town against Norwich City, Hashtag United take on Enfield Town, Howell Sports against Lincoln City, Kings Lynn Town versus Cambridge United, Leamington Lions versus Long Eaton United, Leek Town versus Sutton Coalfield Town, and Leicester Road against Leafield Athletic. Litchfield City versus Boldmere St Michael's, London Seaward against Chelmsford City, Needham Market v Villaricky Town, Paul Town versus Torquay United, Queens Park Rangers against Caversham United, Redcar Town versus Leeds United, Salt Dean United versus Actonians, and Shrewsbury Town against Wem Town, and then finally St Ives Town versus Cambridge City, Stockport County versus Liverpool Feds, Frapston Town against Sporting Cowsa and York City against Newcastle United. Those then are all of the fixtures in the FA Cup third qualifying round that are all taking place this weekend. Uh, just for anybody who is interested, I'll run through the format of the uh, Women's FA Cup this year. So we've had uh, two qualifying rounds so far. There were no preliminary rounds this year. Uh, two qualifying rounds so far. The third qualifying round, which is coming up this weekend. Then the first round proper, which will have the 85 teams. Uh, so Sir Tom Finney ladies plus the winners of the 84 fixtures uh, uh, and plus 27 sides from the third tier, the Northern and Southern Premier Divisions in the Women's National League. That will make 112 teams. Uh, that uh, are competing in the first round. So 56 of them will go through into the second round and that will leave uh, 28 teams uh, that have gone through from the second round into the third round. In the third round, we add in the 12 sides from the uh, Women's Championship uh, to bring us up to 40. That is then halved again in the third round to make it 20 sides. We then add in the 12 sides from the Women's Super League to make it 32 in the fourth round, 16 in the fifth round, and then the quarterfinal, semi-final, and the final. So sides taking part in third qualifying round at the moment need to win one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more games to take home the FA Cup, whereas teams in the Women's Super League only need to win five games to take home the FA Cup. So that is what we've got to look forward to uh, this weekend. So we've got Northern and Southern Premier Division action, plus a whole heap of uh, FA Cup action, which is going to be spectacular as the FA Cup always is. But even though this was a much shorter episode because we had a lot of County Cup action and then the FA Cup, so not a huge amount to discuss this week. Thank you very much for joining me on this week's edition of the FA Women's National League show. Uh, I am still working uh, hard on getting some more guests onto the show, uh, but this is day 38 straight of me uh, working. So time is uh, running a bit short uh, in the weeks to start emailing people and uh, arranging guests uh, but I will be looking to get more guests on this show so it's not just me every week particularly as we get towards winter and games start getting postponed so there'll be less to talk about uh, but I appreciate this was a much shorter episode but thank you very much for joining me and for the support as ever on the FA Women's National League show keep yourself safe and keep supporting your local women's football club stay safe and goodbye <laughs>